to take care of our children, be good parents, amen? Mm -hmm. But this is about decisions that we make. We can't allow anyone, even those closest to us, to influence us or pressure us to, do, to make decisions that are outside the word of God. And that's what he was talking about. So we finished up last week's lesson by discussing the rewards for kingdom disciples. And these rewards that Jesus shares with us in Mark 28 are provided to us in the now, in the present time while we're here on earth, as well as in eternity. Now, the cost and the persecutions we endure by being disciples of Jesus Christ are not for naught. But we will be repaid in due season. And this is where many believers struggle because they don't know the exact time. They don't know the exact date when they're going to be rewarded. But as we're believers, as believers, we should walk by faith and not by sight. We should walk in his word. Amen. We got to trust in his word and wait on him. Be patient. And because his word says that he, his word says that it won't return void, right? But it will accomplish what it was meant to accomplish. Our rewards, our rewards may not be immediate, but the thing about it, church, they will be enormous. They may not always be tangible, but they will have even more value than what we lost. Amen. Amen. So today we're gonna we're gonna build on this on this good news by providing some additional good news. How many of you are ready to hear some good news this morning? Mm -hmm. Ooh, I got a lot of good news. I'm excited to, that God placed it in my heart to share it with you today, church. With all all that's going on, we 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 need some good news. Mm -hmm. This morning we're going to be discussing the impact of kingdom discipleship on us as individuals. So we're gonna see how kingdom discipleship functions and operates. And to find this out, we're gonna to go to our title scripture for today, Matthew 11, and we're gonna look at verses 28 through 30. When you get there, say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. I'm ready. Lord, you prepared me. I'm ready, 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 ready. Praise God. Hmm. Thankful. Thanks, so thankful. Yeah. Boy, this, 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 this scripture, I know y'all heard it. I know y'all seen Pastor Spradley bring it. But this, this, this scripture just gives you so much peace and assurance. You know in this scripture that Jesus loves us when he says these things to us. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Key point I want us to understand, church. As we grow, as we grow in our maturity as kingdom disciples, some of you may have forgotten what, 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 what is a kingdom disciple? A kingdom disciple is a man or a woman who is progressively living all areas of their life under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. That's who a kingdom disciple is. A man, a woman who's progressively living all areas of their life under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. When we, and when we grow, when we mature, we would discover that Jesus offers us what no one or nothing could ever do for us. And what he offers is his rest, church. He offers his rest. A kingdom disciple operates in Jesus' rest. 
And, and what we need to understand today, church, is that this rest is not just a rest in heaven, but it's a right now rest that's ongoing while we're here, right here on earth, church. How many of you ready to receive some rest for your souls this morning? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Rest is here, church. Okay. Peace is here. Mm -hmm. Joy is here, church. Love is here. All these things are available to us and even more right now. Right now. Now, church, although his rest is available, Although his rest is free, mm -hmm. receiving his rest doesn't come, doesn't happen automatically. That's something that we have to understand. Mm -hmm. And in these scriptures, these three verses, Jesus provides three specific actions in these verses to receive his rest. He gives these action verbs, come, mm -hmm. take, and learn. Those are the three action verbs we see. That's our responsibility. So we're going to break down these verses today to bring some clarity and understanding. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look at a familiar example of someone who has received Jesus' rest in a particular area in their lives. Amen. Okay. Amen. Let's, let's, let's start with verse 28. Jesus' first instructions for us is to come to him he says come unto me that, that, that verb come is an active verb right which means we must take action so in order to receive his rest we must first come to Jesus the source of the rest amen and when we come to Jesus you know something church there's some things that we gotta leave behind Amen. Mm -hmm. There's some things that we got to leave behind when we come to him. We got to leave the human wisdom behind. We got to we got to leave the human uh, influence behind. We got to leave the self-sufficiency behind when it comes to coming to Jesus. Amen. How many of you? I'm not just saying this, but it, 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 it plays a it plays a part. You know, sometimes we may feel under the weather, right? At times, and uh, you know, we start out by, you know, taking, you know, old old family remedy, or we'll take over the counter medicine, you know, to try to help fix ourselves with the illness, you know. But sometimes there are cases that sometimes those things work, but there are other times where those cases where they don't work, and it doesn't fix the problem and those attempts don't work. Mm -hmm. So you got to come to a decision, right? Mm -hmm. to, to say, okay, they're not working. I think I may need to go to the doctor, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So when we go to the doctor, the doctor has some information and he has tools and stuff like that that he uses that's beyond our, our knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. the, the doctor has some training. He's got some history. He's got some experience around to, you know, to help identify the source of what our ailment is, right? Mm -hmm. So, when we think about this, just think about our Heavenly Father and how He compares with a physician. There is no comparison. He's, he's God. He, he's the creator of all things. He sees all. He knows all. He controls all, right? But the question we got to ask ourselves if we know all this, why don't we come to him? Why don't we come to him? You know? But the, you know, the, the beautiful thing about Jesus, beautiful thing about him is this. His love. He doesn't force anything on his church. He loves us so much, church. God so loved the world mm -hmm. that he gave his only begotten son. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. that whosoever shall believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. Our Heavenly Father loves us so 
that he gives us the free will to choose to come to him, church. We can choose to do anything and everything we, we want to do using our own, own human knowledge to seek to live life victoriously. He gives us the free will to try and fail over and over again. He gives us the free will to search all over until we come up to the realization that there's nobody greater. There's nobody greater than Jesus. Amen. Amen. There's nobody greater. Jesus, we come to the realization to find out, and I know this personally, from personal experience, Jesus is the only way to live victoriously as a kingdom disciple, church. In him is where we find true rest. True rest. There's some bootleg versions of it out there. How many of you are familiar? I'm, I'm, I'm going to change the subject. I'm, I'm going to leave that up. How many of you are familiar with trash pickup? I think everybody's familiar with that, right? So, they come, trash man comes to pick up our trash on a specific day, right? Pretty much you know, every week, holidays, it may fluctuate, but anyway. One thing I notice about the trash, man, as long as I've lived, is that I've never had an occasion where the trash person would ring my doorbell and say, hey, you know you forgot to leave your trash out? <laughs> Have you ever seen that happen before? I haven't. In my experiment, it, it pretty much goes like this. If my designee or myself doesn't take out the trash, what happens is I got we gotta live with this trash for a whole nother week, right? And, and, and so we take out the trash to prevent this stench of rotten and spoiled food from being overcoming our house for a whole nother week, right? So he said, well, where am I going with this? When Jesus died on the cross, he signed us all up for spiritual trash pickup. Mm -hmm. But you know what we got to do, church? We need to come to him in order for him to take away the spiritual trash that's in us. He's not going to force his rest on us, church. We must come to him and we got to bring our trash to him. And some of you may be wondering, well, what is he talking about, this trash, this spiritual trash? We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, our spiritual trash is anything that's contrary to the word of God that holds us back from completely living out our personal destiny that God has ordained for us. Does that mean? It's anything that's contrary to the word of God that holds us back from completely living out our personal destiny that the Lord has ordained for us. That includes every thought, that includes every belief, that includes the attitudes that we have that result from wrong, that results in wrong behavior, that results in strongholds, that results in addictions, that, adult, that results in bondage. And these things, these, these things that, that put us in bondage, these strongholds, these addictions, it causes us, church, to labor and become heavy laden, as the scripture says, all ye that labor and are heavy laden creates burdens in our lives. You know, church, life has a way of uh, dumping and unloading trash on us, right? Life has a way of doing that. Sometimes we do it, we, we cause it ourselves because of the sins, the actions that we do that are outside the will of God, but sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes it's because of what others have, 
have done to us, either intentionally or unintentionally. But sometimes it just can be circumstances that just come our way. Sometimes we, sometimes we actually have to be, we, we, we're being persecuted, but sometimes it's this, it's this life, mm -hmm. things happen, right? Mm -hmm. And when these things come our way, we get burdened under the weight of trash. Mm -hmm. Things get heavy. What happens after that is over time, this spiritual junk, this spiritual trash can become toxic. When it becomes toxic, church, it produces bitterness. It produces some anger. It produces some fear. It, it, it produces some guilt and doubt. And, it, and it's like a spiritual root that grows on the inside of us, as the, as the scripture says in Hebrews. So what happens is, church, this is what happens. We, we end up, we, we float from person to person, right? carrying our trash with us. And, and, and as we go from person to person, we found out that one thing, nobody wants our trash. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nobody wants our trash. And, 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 and the big, and the, the even bigger thing is, we don't even want our trash, right? We don't even want it. And what we do is we go to the world and we seek help a world that keeps Jesus out of their practice. And what happens, we leave and we still got the trash with us, right? We still have the trash with us. Some of us go to church and we feel good for a moment. We shed a few tears, but when we leave, we still got the trash with us, church. We take the trash with us. We carry it. And uh, nothing seems to free us from our trash. And after a time of carrying this trash for a period of time, you get weary. That's what that when the scripture talks about labor, a lot of times the the the, the some of the translations link we uh, labor to weary when we see this. And some people think that that weary is the same thing as sleepy, but it's not. It's told they're, they're, they're two different things. It's not that they're not the same word. When we're someone is sleepy, right? They can easily fix their sleepiness with a nice bed. Or with some of us, all you got to do is sit still for a little bit, and you're gone. You out, right? <laughs> you sleep enough, it don't take much at all. Some people can sleep standing up. <laughs> Weariness is a little bit different. Weariness means uh, you get to a point where you can no longer relax, church. You can't be at peace with who you are, you know? You reach a point where you've lost your joy. You've reached a point where you lost your peace from this heavy load of trash that you're carrying, you know? This, this burden that you're carrying is preventing you from entering into his rest and having peace in your life. One thing I want to share with you, church, if this description describes who you are right now, you may be sitting here right now, you may be watching this, there is some good news. <laughs> when we live as kingdom disciples, the heap of trash is unloaded from our shoulders, church. Amen. Jesus says that he offers us victory for his kingdom disciples from the things that weigh us down. Doesn't that help you? Doesn't that give you some peace, church? Doesn't that, doesn't that, doesn't this help you understand the importance of coming to Jesus? One key, key point I wanna make before we, we, uh, we move on is this. 
Jesus wants to do more than just live in us. He wants to rule in our lives, church, so that we can become more than conquerors. The victory comes through receiving his rest. So let's, let's talk about this rest. Let's talk about this rest. He says in, in the latter part of verse 28, he says, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Wow. He gives rest to us. Key point I want to make here is about rest. Jesus' rest is only received by those who are totally dependent on him. Mm. Mm -hmm. Jesus' rest is only available to those who are totally dependent on him. To support this point, let's, let's go up to verse 25, Matthew eleven twenty-five, 25, and let's, let's read what Jesus states. He, Jesus prefaces this before he goes into talking about entering into his rest. He says in verse 25, verse 25 says, At the time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Why did Jesus say this? Because we know from Hebrews that God does not reveal. He resists the proud, right? But he gives grace to the humble. He does, he does not reveal himself to the self-sufficient, but he gives his rest to the humble. When we think church, when we think we get, we got this thing called life all figured out, and young people, y'all pay attention. When you think you got this thing called life all figured out and you haven't humbled yourself, you won't receive his rest, church. This is why he is referencing being childlike, being like a babe. A babe is helpless, totally dependent on their parents to take care of them, church. And all they do is cry out. They cry out in need and they wait for somebody to either pick them up, to change them, to feed them, or put a passy in them, right? So, last Sunday, Lana and I were out and my phone rings. I answer the phone and it's my granddaughter, Kenzie, that calls me. He says, hey, Papa, how you doing? So I was like, hey, what you doing? So we talking, going back and forth. And then all of a sudden I hear somebody crying in the background. I say, who is this crying in the background? I say, is it Carly or KJ? She said, it's KJ. And he cried for about 10 seconds. And uh, he stopped. And, I, and she said, yeah, mama went to him. And I don't know what she did. She probably get, did one of those things. But you understand, you understand where I'm coming from. The need, the, the, babe, the baby is, we, we're supposed to be childlike and totally dependent on God. And think about it. I know that, that Kendrick and, and Erica are great parents, but we got to think about the good, good father that we have. We serve a great father who loves us, who takes care of us, who protects us, who gives us knowledge, his wisdom, that's beyond this world's wisdom. It's so beautiful. We, we take, sometimes we take that for granted. The answers to life's burdens are not found in our self-sufficiency church. The answers to life are not found in our knowledge or our success. The answers are found through his word. And the answer, the only way we can receive his word is if we're humble. And we're able to receive him. Now, and when the scripture, when you look at verse 25, you notice that the scripture says, not only those who are proud can not only find it, but he said, the scripture says that it's hidden from them. 
That's interesting. It's hidden from them. So what people fail to see is this. When we attempt to use our own wisdom, you know what it does? It blinds us to the truth. Where you can't even see it. Only true kingdom disciples have access to the mind of Christ, church. The wisdom of our Heavenly Father. Having his mind in us gives us the power, gives us the ability. It allows us to be trans. It allows our lives to be transformed, church. And he's able to supply us with all that we need. Amen. Amen. Let's, let's go back. Let's go down, down to verse 29. We're going to talk about this section, second action. The second action talks about, says, take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon you. When you think about yoke and loads and rest, when I first read it, you know, early on, it didn't seem like those three kind of mixed together, you know, because I was looking at it from the natural perspective. You know, rest to most people means chilling, not doing anything. But that's not always the rest that Jesus is, is offering, you know. Sometimes a burden can be removed, but sometimes the Lord says, you're going to have to endure this burden. And, and when I started looking at this yoking, I had to, I had to study this, this, this scripture a little deeper to break it down. Because I, I didn't really know what a yoke was, you know. So started started looking and understanding this yoke. This yoke is a harness, and it and it's a harness that goes around the necks of two oxen. Back in those days, back in the biblical times, it was two oxen that was used to pull a load. So when we accept Jesus' as yoke, it's not only a picture of total surrender to Him, but it's also a picture of help. Because we're not pulling the load alone anymore. Amen. Amen. Jesus is yoked with us. And he's going to take the lead. And he's going to take the load. So when. As I was studying this, this, this purpose of yoking two oxen together. I found out there were three key things that I took away from this. And it was three symbols that I, symbol, symbol, symbols that I caught from, from studying the, the yoke in the two oxen. The first thing I, I, I noticed that this yoke symbolizes relationship. It, it, it symbolizes companionship because there's a, there's a bond that's formed between the two oxen when they're hooked, because they're hooked side by side, right? That's the first thing I understood I got from it. The second piece that I understood about this yoking between the two oxen is it symbolizes surrender. Because back in the day, the former would always pair an older ox with a younger ox. And the, the younger ox had to learn to surrender to the older ox. He had to surrender to the knowledge and the experience and the power of the older ox. And the third piece that I, I got from it is that there was a shared responsibility between both oxen because each one is pulling the same plow. And as a result, the younger oxen was able to fulfill his purpose through the wisdom and the power of the older ox. So think about this. When we are yoked with Christ, we can go so much farther than we could, than, than we can if we were just doing it on things on our own. You know this. We've experienced this. When we're yoked with Christ, we are sharing in his kingdom authority here on earth. But see what happens with us. We can't enjoy the benefits of living yoked with Christ because we insist on plowing our own fields. By ourselves. I got this. I got this, Lord. 
Don't worry, I got this. No, that's not how it works. We go on our own way, we follow on our own will, and we get outside his will. Holy Spirit shared something with me when the Lord, when I made the, 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 the commitment to, to being pastor of Covenant of Grace Ministries. First thing the Holy Spirit told me was this church. Steve, you don't work alone, son. You don't work alone. Remember, and it stuck with me. He said, you don't operate alone. We don't operate alone as, as the Kingdom Disciples Church. We work with the Lord. He's leading us and guiding us and giving us directions. Amen? You see, we're doing our own thing. It leaves us powerless because we don't get the relational benefits of Christ by being yoked to him, right? right? To take his yoke means that we're willing to choose to go where he says to go, to do what he says to do, to think what he says to think. That means surrender, church. Total surrender. Key point I want to make right here. Our level of victory is directly related to our level of surrender to Jesus Christ. Our level of victory in our lives is directly correlated with our level of surrender to Jesus Christ. Jesus wants to stay connected to us. He wants us to stay connected to him continually. You do, do we hear this? He wants us to stay connected to him continually. One thing that I did notice, I've never seen, it, 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 you know, I, I never, I didn't read anything about uh, an ox taking a few steps and unyoking himself and then taking a few more steps. I haven't seen that before. We got to stay connected to Jesus continually. The scripture says he's the true vine. We are his branches. And in order to be fed by him, we got to be connected to him continually. Amen. Amen. In good times, in bad times, and they're just normal times. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Good times, bad times, normal times. Regardless. And the good, the good news I want to share to you about this church is this. Jesus tells us that he is meek. He's gentle and lowly in heart. He's humble. And his yoke is easy. Whew, praise God. His yoke is easy. I want to I wanna, I wanna talk to you about this word, easy. The, word, the Greek word for easy is krestos. C-H-R-E-S. T-O-S, Crestos. And this, 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 this meaning of Crestos, it means pleasurable. It means delightful. It means comfortable. So we can say that his yoke for us has been custom made. Ooh-wee! So in other words, he specifically had each and every one of us in here in mind when he designed this show for us. And on top of that church, his yoke is not wearisome and it doesn't it doesn't confine us church. You know what his yoke does? It liberates us. Free from worry, free from guilt, free from fear, free from condemnation church. Isn't this good news? Isn't this good news? Praise God. Last action. He tells us, he says, learn of me. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Ooh, you know something, church? This action, 
you know, we skip a lot of church. Folk, folk forget this at this part of the, the scripture. They, they, they like, they get all excited about it. And it is exciting. The heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. But they don't, they don't focus on this learn of me. We're going to find out how we fully maximize our individual lives as, as kingdom disciples. The scripture tells us that the truth will make us free, right? The truth is the word of God. And as kingdom disciples, we must make an exchange when we come to Jesus. We give the Lord our trash. Amen. Anything contrary to the word of God, and we receive his truth, which is the word of God. A kingdom disciple understands the importance of taking every thought captive and aligning it with God's viewpoint. And see, when we align our thoughts with his thoughts, it affects our decisions, it affects our actions. Learning is the concept of discipleship. A kingdom disciple is a student, right? We are students, disciples are students of the kingdom of God. We're students of Jesus Christ. As a student, in order to learn, we must be teachable. In order to be teachable, we have to have a willingness to learn. Amen? You know what, you know what kind of issues we face today? As in the church, we have an issue with so many people where their willingness to be entertained is greater than their willingness to learn. People want to be entertained. They got something to do with learning. They, they moonwalking. They doing the electric slide. But what people fail to understand is that entertainment only gives us temporary relief. And what folks are blind to understanding and knowing is this, church, still carrying that heavy burden with you doesn't, doesn't, doesn't release that burden at your shoulder in church doesn't release it. Still carrying that he heavy weight. Church, we must have a willingness to learn of the Lord. And, and not only is it about learning, we got to take it a step further. Because some folks learn. They, they, they know stuff. But it's about accepting it and submitting to his word as well. Put it into action. Not only does this produce faith in us, but it puts forth the actions those actions of integrity and the character of God should be manifesting through us, in us and through us. Learning from Jesus means to replace our human wisdom with his kingdom wisdom. And that means showing respect to him, reverence to him, receiving his grace, not only receiving his grace, but giving grace to other folks as well. Amen. Overcoming temptations, Knowing our identity in Christ, having faith in his word and in all areas of our lives, church. Jesus is saying to us to learn his way of operating. Church, and I know this personally, I've tried it my way. I've tried it my way. It's failed. Time after time after time after time, church. It makes you weary. It makes you heavy laden, church. Learn his way. Learn from him because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Church, it's a new way of thinking. You got to have a new way of thinking when you're learning of him. It's not the what, what the world has taught us. It's a new mind. It's a new yoke. Jesus exchanges this old yoke that we carry 
that, that enslaves us for our custom-made yoke that he's designed for us to be free, church. Good news, isn't it? Good news. So by coming to Jesus, by taking his yoke, by learning from him, church, we receive what the last four words in verse 29 says. And ye shall find souls, rest unto your souls. Those last four words, rest unto your souls. Verse 30 says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. One thing, church, that we should always keep in mind, because sometimes this gets misread. Jesus never said that we wouldn't have any burdens. He never said that. Never said that. But what he did say, <laughs> some burdens, like, like we said earlier, some burdens will get taken away, but sometimes we gotta endure it. But what he did say, that this burden wouldn't weigh the same. It would be light. I remember I was uh, carrying something, I, and I can't remember, I think it may have been a bag, and I was struggling with it and straining with it. And somebody went up to me and said, Steve, don't you know that bag has rollers on it? <laughs> I was like, oops. Boy, I had a moment. <laughs> so I started rolling it. <laughs> and there was a difference. Still the same weight. But it was light. My burden was light. That's one thing we gotta keep in mind because sometimes, you know, sometimes he, you know, circumstances can come up against us and, uh, but God can put wheels on those circumstances, you know? So those challenges that we face won't weigh us down as they used to. It, it allows that, that burden to become light. I know, Pastor, you know something about that personally. As we talk, uh, in this life, we face many problems, church. We face many obstacles. We face many pressures. We face many circumstances. And they all come in all different shapes and sizes, right? And, and at times, it, it becomes difficult to find some rest, it becomes difficult to try to find some peace and some joy in the midst of it. But when we choose to yoke up with Jesus, church, -wee, the Lord says that we will have rest, his rest, not only just rest, but his rest, amen? True rest, amen? Let's close, I wanna close by looking at an example of a person who receive rest when enduring the difficult circumstances and this 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 scripture is familiar with it familiar to everybody but I want to this I want to bring about a new twist to it because you can you can learn something new every time you read a familiar scripture we're going to go to second Corinthians 12 and we're going to look at verses 7 through 10 y'all are familiar with this this is Paul dealing with this thorn in his side amen Y'all, we're familiar with this passage, but it talks about rest. If we look, if we study this, this scripture, it's important that we look at because he, he's dealing with, a, with, with some persecution and he's needing some rest from it. And we see how, we find, how he finds his rest. So let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. It says in verse 7, we'll start with it. It says, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. So Paul has been given a thorn in his flesh. And it's, it's, it's a problem, it's, a, it's some persecution. Don't know specifically, but it's some persecution that's going on, some circumstances that have come upon him at this particular time, you know? Sometimes we, 
there's, 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 there's suffering for righteousness, there's persecution for righteousness that takes place with the believer. The scripture t teaches us on this. So in verse 8, says, for this thing, Paul says, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. So, so we see Paul coming to Jesus. Not once, not twice, but three times requesting this burden to be removed. We talked about this earlier. All burdens don't necessarily get removed. Sometimes they do. But sometimes they don't. God wants us to endure this burden. And there's a purpose for us enduring. There's some development and growth that's a part of this enduring, this burden. But what Jesus, think about it, when we carry a burden, and Jesus says you're going to have to do it, endure it, what he'll do is he'll help make it light for us. Amen. He'll carry that burden for us. So verse 9 says, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest, may rest, may rest upon me. Amen. So there's a transition that takes place after Jesus responds to Paul by telling him, my grace is sufficient for thee. Paul comes to Jesus. He takes upon, he, he learns from him by the word that Jesus specifically gives to him. And he receives his, the word from Jesus. He accepts the word. And he submits himself to the word that, that Jesus said. He says, my grace is sufficient. I, be, I receive it. I believe it. I'm going to stand firm on this word. And by, the, and by doing this, we see in verse 9 that Christ's rest is now upon him. We know that burden was, I don't know what area. Sometimes you may be dealing with a burden in a certain area of life. He was dealing with a burden. And he couldn't get no rest about it. We know that because he had to go, to, he went to Jesus three times. But God gave him a word. He received it. Not only did he receive his word, but he received his rest as a result. Amen. 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 In order to receive Christ's rest, he had to surrender to him first. And this allowed his thorn in the flesh to become a light burden. And that's why he could say in verse 10, Therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities, in my reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Amen. As a kingdom, as kingdom disciples church, please remember this. Please remember this. Receiving Jesus rest only happens when we pursue an intimate relationship with him. When we come to him, when we take his yoke, when we learn from him, he shares his authority with us, which enables us to do way more than we could ever imagine that we could do by ourselves, Lord. Praise God. May God bless you. And may his grace continue to supply you abundantly in Jesus' name. Amen.